never stop for gas at night. There's a reason why that saying exists. I'm Brenda, and I was coming home from a party last Sunday. My friend lived on the outskirts of town and I ended up staying late. My friend told me to crash at his place, but I refused as I had to go home to my dog. Driving down the long, empty highway surrounded by vast fields in the middle of the night felt like quite a stress reliever. I rolled down the window and let the air brush across my face. As I went to turn on the music, I saw that I was running out of gas. When I reached the gas station, I found it completely empty. The blinking light of the small snack store hinted that it was open. There wasn't anyone outside to help with refilling, so I got out of the car and started walking towards the storefront. As I said, I had just come from a party so I was wearing high heels with a short flared skirt. The ambience was so quiet that when I walked my footsteps echoed into the night. Suddenly, I saw movement in a dark corner and I stopped. Someone was standing right next to the store but he kind of hid himself in a shadow. It was a man. Um, excuse me? Are you going to help me refill my car? I would love to do that for you. <laughs> the man came into the light, revealing his appearance. He had a box-shaped face and his eyes were creepy. He had long, thin hair that gave him a messed up appearance. He wore a dingy blue jumpsuit and was holding a big crowbar in one hand. Are you the owner of this place? Yes, and I'm at your service. Should I call you ma'am? <laughs> he tilted his neck while laughing uncomfortably. His eyes never blinked and they were fixated on me like magnets. By this point I was extremely creeped out, so I turned and started walking back to my car. I was hoping to get the job done and set out on the road as soon as possible. The man walked behind me, even with my back turned. I could tell he was grinning at me the entire time. As soon as I reached my car, I went to open the door and the man suddenly picked up speed and pushed the door closed, stopping me from getting in. I can't let you get in before I'm done filling your tank. What? Why? I've never heard of such a thing. I moved away from him in fear while pelting him with my questions. What if you drive off without even paying me, huh? Are you crazy? Get away from my car. I'll get a refill somewhere else. But the next one is miles away. What if you run out of gas? That's none of your concern, mister. I can... Patrick. What? My name is Patrick. He scratched his back with a crowbar and again tilted his head to one side giving me a top-to-bottom stare. Now I felt a cold shiver race down my spine. His body language seemed threatening. He did look like he would lunge at me any time with that gigantic metal tool, so I remained quiet. The man started filling the tank. Whatever he did, he didn't take his eyes off of me once, and that smile stretched his face, growing bigger by the second. You're good to go now. <laughs> Saying this, he backed off from my car. I unlocked the car doors and jumped back in. A little ray of hope that the guy might just be creepy and not some psycho killer had just started to rise in my heart when I noticed a hand waving at me from inside the store. The hand was at ground level and trying its best to grab the handle, but then it dropped. It took me a second to realize that whoever that hand belonged to was probably lying on the floor of that store. The man suddenly snapped his fingers right in front of my face. Hello, what about my money? Yeah, sure. I searched through my wallet and the man suspiciously looked behind him. He didn't realize that I had seen the hand. He looked back at me. The evil smile was long gone and a confused face watched me instead. After handing him the money, he turned around and started walking back to the store. Now that he had his back face towards me, I saw his dirty white t-shirt. There were two smeared stripes, which at first looked like red paint, but then the horror jolted me. Do you need anything else? He again turned and yelled. I could sense anxiety in his voice. He just wanted me to leave and I now knew why. I started the engine and drove away. The man stopped and watched me leave. When I was out of his sight, 
I pulled over to call 911, but it would take time for the cops to arrive. So I grabbed a small tire iron from the trunk of my car and took off my heels. I ran back to the gas station, but this time, I snuck towards it from the other side. I reached the outside of the window and peeked into the store. The man was standing inside and talking to someone. Once I heard what he was saying, my blood turned to ice. Well, looks like you ain't as lucky as her. <laughs> God is great. Now, let's finish what we started, shall we? No! No! I saw the man raising his crowbar, aiming for a woman lying on the ground. I smashed the window with my tire iron, breaking it into pieces. Stop! You... I shouldn't have let you go in the first place! He ran to the exit to catch me, but the girl lying on the floor bit his leg. Ugh, you witches! This is why you all need to be punished! I quickly vaulted from the window ledge and bashed him on the head with my tire iron. He was knocked unconscious almost immediately. The cops arrived and took him away. He was cursing me the entire time. The girl who I saved was Nina. She too had stopped for gas on the way home and this crazy gas station owner planned to make her his victim. When I first saw him, he was hiding Nina's scooter at the back of the gas station to avoid any suspicion. But thank God I was there in time. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened to her. I've been managing my uncle's gas station for a while now. I started as a part-time worker. After school, I worked there to save up money before moving out. I didn't have many friends because of my workaholic schedule, but one thing even I knew was that it was best to stay away from the Prickly sisters. Gina and Betty Prickly were siblings and came from a lot of money. All those girls cared about was clicking their pictures and posting them on Instagram. They always wore tight clothes and had lots and lots of makeup caked on their faces. When they walked side by side on their high heels, they made boys' heads turn. One night, I was working in the gas station stocking the shelves, when I heard a squeaky voice nearly in my ear. Hi, Robbie! Ah! Jeez! <laughs> Silly. I turned around and it was the Prickly Sisters. I could never remember which one was Gina and which was Betty, so I addressed them as... Hi, guys. You need anything? They both were staring weirdly at me. They had large wads of bubble gum in their mouths and they kept chewing like freaks. Um, hello? You should be glad that we came to your crabby shop, Robbie. Do you even know how many followers we have? <sighs> Here it comes. This is why people avoid them. I couldn't care less, so I got a little rude. Look, man, if you want something, help yourself, or don't waste my time. What did you just say? We are wasting your time? What the hell are you even worth? You useless piece of- Look, if you're not leaving, I'm calling the cops! They stopped screaming and then suddenly did something strange. Dumb witches started clicking selfies with me. I was bombarded by clicks and their stupid poses. Their shiny fingernails kept clicking while they both squeezed me between them. Before leaving, they both looked at me one last time and grinned. The next day when I got to school, everyone was laughing at me. Suddenly, I was tagged in my Instagram. Once I opened it, my jaw dropped. The Prickly Sisters tagged me in a selfie from my gas station last night. They had morphed my image into a woman and the tagline read, it's time to come out of your closet, Robbie. What the hell? They were spreading rumors about me, trying to portray me as someone I'm not. I stormed into class and saw them giggling amongst themselves looking at their phone. Hey, you! What the hell was all that? What are you talking about, Robbie? We just wanted to help you. Don't be afraid of what people say. Yeah, I mean, now it makes sense why you never flirted with us. The two hottest bombshells. <laughs> Come out of your closet now. They taunted me and humiliated me in front of everyone. My brain couldn't take it anymore. 
I clenched both of their hair in anger. You freak! This is- But as I pulled, I realized they were wearing wigs. Their hairless skulls saw the light of day in front of the entire school. Their prank backfired. Ah! You piece of- Give us our hair back! The sisters snatched their wigs from my hands and ran screaming. Everyone was laughing at them and even though I felt bad, I told myself they had it coming. For the next three days, the prickly sisters were nowhere to be seen. I thought the embarrassment from school had straightened them up, but God, I was so wrong. I went home after work one night when it started raining heavily. I wasn't carrying my umbrella, so I chose the shortcut home. The path went through the woods and coupled with rain. The area was pretty sketchy at that hour. Suddenly, I heard splashes behind me. I turned around aiming the flashlight of my phone and there they were. The prickly sisters, standing behind me in the rain. They looked horrible. All the makeup was smeared on their faces as it endured the rain. How long had they been following me? They weren't wearing their wigs which made them look even more bewildering. Going home, Robbie? Yeah. I felt my voice break a little. The sisters started slowly approaching me. I too began backing up. Look, what happened between us? Can we just forget about that? You want to forget everything, Robbie? Wouldn't that be nice for you, huh? Because you don't have followers to be bothered about. Do you know that the students clicked our wigless pictures that day? And now our followers are leaving us because you made us look ugly! Hatred and anger were dripping from their eyes. We won't let you forget, Robbie! We won't! Ah! They screamed and started running at me. I too was startled and rushed to the opposite direction. I couldn't see where I was going in the rain, but all I wanted to do was to leave them behind. After running for 20 minutes straight, I reached home. I bumped into the door not being able to control my body. The next day, I didn't go to school or the gas station thinking they would again torment me. But that night, when I turned on the news, I saw something horrible. There had been a report of a car smashing into our store. The footage the cops shared showed a big black van coming directly towards the gas station at full speed, hitting a passing car and then smashing into the store. Two girls got out of the car immediately after the crash, and they were none other than Gina and Betty. Both were overly dressed and unharmed by the accident. They barely seemed to care about what they had done and no remorse could be seen in their body language. They just walked away leaving the scene of the accident. This was the last time I saw those nut jobs. My uncle received insurance for the damage but the cops couldn't locate the girls. People in my family think the girls in the footage weren't the prickly sisters, but I'm sure they did it to take their revenge. So Gina and Betty, if you two are watching this... I know it was you two witches who crashed into my uncle's gas station that night. I hope you burn in hell! The above story is based on the footage collected from a gas station in Los Angeles. In the security camera footage, a car can be seen approaching the gas station at a very high speed. It slams into a minivan and skids crashing into the gas station. Moments later, two women come out of the car and try to restart it. When they couldn't restart the car, they simply walk away, leaving the damaged vehicle behind. The incident and the video footage seem very bizarre as the women appear less bothered by the damage they had caused. There have been no reports on this accident and those two women were never caught as well. When I finally got off work, it was midnight. I highly doubted any restaurant would be open now. My stomach made a rumbling sound signifying it was dying of hunger. God, I need to eat. I hurried down the office elevator, finding myself on the lonely, dark streets. My house wasn't far away, but no man can sleep on an empty stomach. That's when I had an idea. There's a convenience store at the gas station nearby. I can get some instant noodles and maybe a couple of beers to call it a night. Also, it was the weekend, and what can be more exciting than welcoming it with a couple of drinks? I went through with my plan and stopped by the gas station. The owner was dozing on the counter. There was a strong smell that wafted out of his mouth every time he let out a snoring breath. I picked up some ramen noodles and a few cans of beer. Then, I walked to the counter and woke him up. 
With his drowsy eyes, the man rung up everything. I was going to pay him when I noticed a wooden box kept on the other side of the counter. It was filled with red tomatoes. Generally, the convenience store sold ready-to-eat stuff, so seeing something fresh was a little surprising. Hey, man, are those tomatoes? Yes, from my garden, but I don't sell them at night. His answer felt odd to me. I didn't know someone needed to set a time slot to sell tomatoes. How much for a dozen? I told you, I don't sell them at night! Whoa, what the hell, dude? Why not? It's just a bunch of vegetables. Ah! He was refusing to sell them, and I was adamant about buying them anyway. Actually, after a point, it became a matter of silly ego. When the man still refused, I took out a $100 bill and dangled it in the air. Can I have 12 of these now? Snatching the bill from my hand, he gave me 12 red fresh tomatoes in a transparent polyethylene bag. I left with a proud smile on my face, which only took five seconds to fade away. And this is where things went wrong. I was walking along on the sidewalk and there were no cars on the streets. That's when I heard something behind me. I looked back but saw nothing but the empty highway behind me. I'd already wandered far from the gas station. It was as I was walking in the dark spot between streetlights that I felt alone, out in the middle of the night. I increased my speed and just then I noticed a man standing in my way. There was quite some distance between us but I could see him. He had a blank face and was staring at me. Then his eyes shifted down to my hand and a sick smile appeared on his face. Jeez, what a weirdo. I began walking as I muttered to myself. The man didn't move. He just stood there watching me coming towards him. The more I walked closer to him, the more a tense feeling gripped my throat. What if he tried to do something? We were inches apart when I changed my lane to walk past him, and he surprisingly moved aside as well again, blocking my way. What the? I moved to my left, and so did he. What's your problem, dude? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He pointed at my bag of tomatoes and asked for one. Realizing he wouldn't move unless I gave him one, I heaved in disappointment. Maybe he's just some hungry homeless guy. I gave him one red tomato. He took it from my hand with his long, bony fingers and moved away. I started walking, but kept turning back to see what he was up to now. As soon as he got the tomato in his grasp, he chomped a big bite out of it. The tomato was so juicy that the red juice leaked from the corners of his mouth, dripping on his clothes. The way he ate tomatoes made me cringe. I turned away and took the last turn to my house, thinking the world is filled with creeps. I blame my own unlucky fate for coming across the man. I was close to my house when I noticed something on my right. It was him again, standing under a lamppost. His face was smeared with the juices of the tomato he had already gobbled up, but now there was a smile. What the frack? How did he get here? With slow, trembling steps, I walked towards him. He just stood there, watching me with an evil smile. Suddenly, he jumped and blocked my way. What the hell do you want? Go away or I'll make you, freak! Ah! 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 He was again asking for a tomato. That's when it hit me. Could he be the reason why the store owner refused to sell the tomatoes in the first place? Did it even make sense? Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead. I grabbed another tomato and threw it at him. He didn't try to catch it, and the tomato smashed on the ground. His wide, scary eyes looked down at the ruined tomato, and looked back at me. I took a step to my right, and he lunged in the same direction, blocking my way. Are you crazy? All this fuss for a damn vegetable? His gaze turned furious, and he gave me a smoldering death stare like he was about to snap. I grabbed my house keys tightly in my other hand. I could see my house flashing like a beacon of safety on the other side of my life and death situation. He suddenly started walking towards me. I wanted to move, but my legs froze. My breathing got heavier. He kept walking and then suddenly picked up speed. Now he was frantically running at me. <laughs> I threw the bag of tomatoes at him and ran for my life. I only stopped when I got home. As soon as I got in, I slammed the door behind me. Not once had I looked back during that time. I checked if all the windows were locked and then cowered under the covers for the entire night. I even forgot to eat. The next morning when I got up, I found that someone had left a note on my porch. The note read, Did you know a tomato is a fruit? 
I bet you didn't. <laughs>